that. We're going to play physical football. Broadcasting from the basement of La Penta, this is WI. Good evening, Iona. This is Circle to Circle here with your host, Stephen Pierce. And, of course, I'm your co-host, Pete Considori. Now, we got a weekend recap we, from... We do. The man himself, <laughs> Steve the Steve Pierce. Oh, how kind of you, Petey. All right, we'll kick it off on Thanks. Friday, November 20th. Uh, we had Toronto uh, at Carolina facing the Hurricanes. <laughs> and Toronto took this one 2-1 in a shootout. And then we also had the Predators at Columbus, and Columbus shut them out. Bobrovsky had a shutout 4 nothing. Moving to Detroit. It's going to be the only one this year. <laughs> there were a lot of shutouts this weekend. Believe it or not. <laughs> oh, my goodness. And I can't believe the, the Blue Jackets won a game, so that's good. Tortorella. <laughs> oh, goodness, the tortoise. All right, what do we got here? We got Detroit. Uh, Detroit took uh, in regulation 3-2 over the Los Angeles Kings in regulation as well. The Montreal Canadiens took a 5-3 victory over the New York Islanders. And Calgary upset the Chicago Blackhawks 2-1 in OT. And Edmonton blew out the Devils 5-1 in Edmonton. Then on Saturday night, we had your very own New York Rangers win in overtime after a crazy one in Florida. And then you got Boston shutting out the Toronto Maple Leafs. You got also Ottawa shutting out the Flyers. And you got Tampa Bay shutting out the Ducks 5 nothing. So you got a 2-0 shutout from the Bruins, a 4 nothing shutout from the Senators, a 5 nothing shutout from the Lightning. And then you got uh, the Sharks taking it to pin the Penguins 3-1. And then the Capitals just rolling over the Avalanche 7-3. Oh, my goodness. Poor Avs. They're just having a rough go at it. Yeah, well. But we're all off his back uh, off the IR, so we'll see what's going on with them. And then we got uh, the Winnipeg Jets uh, taking a 3-2 victory over Arizona Coyotes. I almost said Phoenix. Still in that mindset. All right. And it's we got tough. It's Detroit tough. Detroit playing his back-to-back game, uh, taking this one against the Blues in OT 4-3. That must have been a good game. I, I wish I could have saw that one. Here's some more shout-outs for you. Dallas shutting out the Sabres 3-0. And Minnesota Wild shutting out the Predators 4-0. A lot of big shutouts this weekend. And then very uh, very lastly on Saturday, you had Vancouver 6-3 over the Blackhawks. So Blackhawks did not have a good weekend uh, on neither, Friday neither Saturday. Did the, neither did the Predators. Oh, yeah. Shut out twice. No, no, no. They had, yeah, well, you are right. You are right, sir. They did get shut out twice. Thank and you. And it was 4-0 both times. You know, I, I want to talk about something, you know, that is, I don't want to say sensitive, but I'm going to say it anyway. Okay. The New York Islanders in the new building. I think it's hurting them pretty bad. The fans don't like it. I can tell you that uh, much. I, I Especially mean, the ones I've talked to. I'm not a, a fan of the Islanders. As you all uh, know, we are both Ranger fans, die hard. <laughs> I think the move really hurt them. I, I feel like not a lot of the true fans are coming out to the games because of expense and also, you know, yeah. it's convenient to go out on the island and see them. Yeah, because um, uh, for most of the Long Island fans, absolutely. obviously. Um, I, just, I just also just think, nice yeah, I just think me. that the players are also effective to, affected by it too. I think it's really that. Well, I mean, I, I I'm not going to take anything away from them because they did have a great year last year, and I did kind of expect them to have a, another year. They had they a phenomenal year. Yeah, last they, year. I, I was I was expecting them to make the playoffs, but I didn't think they they would be the same team. Akposo, uh, Kyle Akposo is playing on a contract year, so he doesn't know where he's going to be. If they're not in a good spot come the trade deadline in in March, they're going to they're probably going to lift. Probably going to move. Probably going to move them. For some uh, for some younger it's gonna, talent, it's going to be interesting better. to see how it happens next year with the new owner. I, you know, what? it's going to be really interesting, yeah. man. I I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know. I just want your thoughts on it. I mean, it's nothing crazy. It just no, no, no. You're absolutely thought, right. Thought I, maybe I bring that to the table. I don't think anyone likes the Barclays Center. No. Uh, and and not given obviously the Nets play there and and it's fine for them, but it's such a huge move for the 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 Islanders to move yeah, there. It's, it's, huge. Just, it's just so I don't know, man. It sucks a little bit of the joy out of that well, because well, if you went to the Coliseum, yeah. that one might have been the loudest place yeah. in the world when the Islanders were were were, were playing there. Yeah, so, that's uh, true. To, um, to quickly finish you know, this uh, it's, it's, recap yeah. before we move into some fantasy. Speaking of the, the Predators getting eight and O shut out against them this weekend, Pecorino is my fantasy goalie. So we'll talk about that in a minute. But oh yeah. my goodness, it was a <laughs> rough weekend. Hey, you man, still I, beat me, didn't you? I didn't play. I played you last week. No, right? I know, but oh, I wonder if I won this week. I gotta check. <laughs> well, Pete checks that out. On Sunday night, we had Carolina taken to the Kings four three. Columbus fell to the Sharks five three. Those Islanders we just discussed fell to the Canadians in Montreal four two. And the Devils finally took one on the road in Vancouver three to two. And tonight we look forward to the Rangers playing the Predators uh, in MSG at uh, MSG. Excuse me, St. Uh, Louis. Are we up. calling a third shutout? <laughs> oh my goodness! I don't know if my fantasy team can take much more of this. 
Luckily, I had a monster week from some of my other guys. But then we have uh, St. Louis in Buffalo tonight at 7 o'clock playing the Sabres. Then we got Flyers and Hurricanes, some uh, Metropolitan Division action going on there. And then we got Washington taking on Edmonton Oilers. They're in D.C. today. And then you got Toronto playing the Leafs. Oh, that's that's going to be a nice original six matchup there. Right. Two teams trying to figure out what's going on with themselves. Then you got Los Angeles in Florida in the Sunshine State. And lastly, you got the Avs playing at eight o'clock against the Winnipeg Jets. All right, I'm going to say this. We're going to go into fantasy now, everyone. I've I've made the executive decision. <laughs> Good choice. Um, so to give you a recap of our um, fantasy sports, going, we're using ESPN Fantasy. We're doing head to head week uh, weekly head to heads. Let me just give you a a a roundabout way please, of please of, tell, of what the people how well what, I'm doing. What these points have been, because <laughs> <laughs> this is honestly ridiculous. So we'll start off with the the tie of this week. We had Team Ian Sachs going up against his cousin, tying with 88 points. That's on the low end. All right, <laughs> that's on the low end. What I mean about points, because the when I played uh, Big Shot Rob uh, Bobby B. Uh, Rob Uncardo, he, um, I beat him, but I got 87 points and he got 73. Now we're really on the low end of the spectrum. Let's go to the two top. Oh yeah. Top scoring, uh, do, do tell. Uh, four top scoring teams, <laughs> but you know, it, they were against each other. So we had team Steven Pierce against one of the Grippos because of course we have both Nick Grippo and <laughs> and his brother, but they both have team Grippo. So we don't know who's playing, honestly. <laughs> I'm thinking Team Grippo with the 56 points is Nick because he doesn't know what he's doing. Yeah. And his brother auto-drafted, so he got every best-of player anyway. So Nick was going up against Steve, and uh, our very own Steve got 135 points this week. I did indeed. And and beat, obviously, Nick Grippo with 56 points. I mean, that, that was just a disgrace. Oh, yeah. And then Joe Archino falling to Joe Grippo this week, mm-hmm. 129 to 117. Sounds like basketball scores at this point. I, it's just amazing. Now, coming up next week, if you guys care, because you probably don't, but I'm going to I'm gonna tell them tell the people anyway because oh, please do. they probably want to know who I'm playing next week. Of course. Um, I'm playing Team Ian Sachs. Uh, team Archino is playing one of the Grippo brothers. Well, Steve, you're, you're playing. To give you a little background on, on your team and Sachs, you guys are, are, are really battling it out between yeah, are, second and third we are, we are for like your tied. division. You're four and three, and Sachs is three and three, and you're behind Joe Archino, of course, Jersey Joe, at five wait, wait, and wait. two. Wait, wait, wait. How can I be... Oh, because he tied, so it means nothing. Ah. He got, he's three, three, and one. Wow. Oh, and man. And meanwhile, uh, Grippo down there is 0 oh and seven. Well... Well, poor guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is the eighth match. We still got a while to go. Well, what do we got? Like twenty-two weeks here? Yeah, probably. Oh yeah, and I'm sitting in a comfortable lead right now. Yeah, comfortable I got, lead. I have a. I'm I'm six and one on the year, uh, followed by uh, Joe Grippo. Oh, thank you. I you're just welcome. got thrown something at. By, yeah, you're uh, welcome, by Pete. I was you're, like, I thought I felt something. Yeah. Light brush my shoulder. At uh, Team Grippo, uh, uh, excuse me, Joe Grippo is behind me at five and two, so it's not that comfortable lead. Yeah, but no. then we have Fairclaw and Bobby B. Two and four and one and two and I'm gonna, five. I'm going to express my feelings right now. Is Jersey Joe in the room? Is he here? Is I he hope not? he's listening. He's not in there. I'm going to say it anyway. I think it shouldn't be called Team Archino. <laughs> I know where this is going. It, it, should, <laughs> it should be called Team Matthews, and I'll explain why. Team My Girlfriend Pick My Team for Me. Team My Girlfriend Pick My Team for Me. She had the most talent out of all of us when it came to drafting, and, <laughs> and, and he's taking all the credit for it. And I don't think it's fair. So I'm giving credit where credit is due. So Just congratulations. Calling him out. Right I mean, now. come on, really? Like everyone knew that Jersey Joe, you know, was picking hockey. Like someone was going to help him. Come on, everyone knew someone was going to help him. Yeah, well, well, I'll give you some insight as to why he I'm told on. me once, and I'm gonna. He, he told me this in confidence because it's embarrassing, and I'm gonna say it on the air anyway. Oh no! That he once Sorry, traded. Joe. <laughs> that he once <laughs> traded away like a top like forward for Joe Thornton, like years ago. <sighs> Well, I mean, uh, I forgot who he gave up. It was probably Kane or something. He gave up someone really, really good, so he can have, have Jumbo the Sharks. Joe. Yeah, he's, he's a Sharks a, fan. No? He's a Sharks fan. Okay, all right. He's I so understand. much of a Sharks fan. He wore Seattle Seahawks jersey to the Ranger Philadelphia game one of the playoffs two years ago. Wow. Yeah, it okay. was kind of it was kind of awkward. That that's an interesting. Jersey yeah. Joe, 
buy a Rangers jersey. <laughs> 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 or a San Jose Sharks one. They're nice I think he's jerseys. got some Chicago because uh, his team is loaded right now no, with, he, with Kane yeah, Hosa. And Kane is just having a yeah. monster year right now. He's leading the league in points, I think, at 32. I think he's got 13 goals on the year. So he's having a pretty good year, it is safe to say. And you know what? I'll give you a little bit of insight as to uh, to my 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 third like I, okay so you heard in the intro I was thinking of Corey Perry and big things of the Ducks this year <laughs> which is quite embarrassing now Woo! because they are not doing so well horrible as you can see from the standings and in fact oh. Corey Perry has just virtually just let me down so much this year I actually picked Stamkos first and then I picked uh, I think it was Corey Perry I mean, he next. was a good pickup and, you know what okay here this is fair he was oh he, and look who's coming now <laughs> okay all right well we'll get back to that Jersey in a Joe <laughs> and team Matthews <laughs> uh, so I picked Corey Perry but I I was this close so close uh, to picking up Patrick Kane first but I you know what I believed in Corey Perry and that was a wrong mistake you know what sir. you trusted your gut and I that did just and it let me shows down. you what happens and what's funny is I asked my girlfriend Patrick Kane or Corey Perry and she also said Patrick Kane so the girlfriends are doing something right right now I didn't do Oh, man, I failed. But in any case, my team has been just so <laughs> – has been so good regardless. And uh, I owe a lot of that um, to my defensive core right now because John Klinberg is having a monster year, as is uh, John Carlson of Washington and Ryan Suter's also doing very well. P.K. Subban, I got Chris Letang, Victor Hedman. I went for the strong defense there, and I also picked up Pecorino, who let me down this past weekend. Yeah, uh, he that's minus, an understatement. Minus eight. That's an understatement. But, you know, my, I'm still able to score 130 points. So I don't know what is happening, but I can tell you my, my defense yeah, if he is did well, up. if he did well, you probably would have cleared 150 points. Yeah, man. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I have, I have a pretty solid team. I also got Dougie Hamilton, who's uh, been uh, kind of a big letdown for me on Calgary. I expect a big things man when he came over from Boston uh in that trade this year he's a young guy he's talented uh I just really thought his offense was going to come playing with guys like Giordano uh the captain over there in Calgary so uh, I don't know but Johnny Goudreau has been on the other hand for Calgary on uh, my team has been been lighting it up I thoroughly enjoy that how is your team doing Pete great <laughs> thanks for asking he says facetiously yeah no listen I mean thank you for the commentary by the way if anyone didn't know how I was saying it we can listen to you and your beautiful oh, voice oh this is this is this is what I'm here for yep I'm a so, host for a reason come so, on <laughs> yeah thanks like <laughs> wow <laughs> if that was an insult of the year um <laughs> so yeah no I'm doing pretty well I'm sitting pretty on um Ovechkin Langeskog Zuccarello and Eichel uh to be honest with you and of course I got my you know fastest shot in last year's NHL you know, hardest shot competition, 108 point something miles per hour, Shea Weber. Oh, what a monster he is. Oh, he's great. Um, I'm really liking my my defense. I got Klein, Girardi. I mean, it, Girardi was like kind of like a last round pick for me. Mm. But see, Not I had a point getter. No. Oh, for those of you who don't know, in our league, uh, we don't do, uh, since this was most of our first year trying to get into fantasy hockey, trying to figure out what we're doing, we didn't go with like all that huge amount of categories, like when you get points yeah, for no, face-offs and shock blocks. We strictly have goals. Shot blocks. Uh, you you get it for everything, man. Blocked shots. What did I say? Shot blocks. Shot blocks. I mean, thanks for calling thing. me out on the air, Pete. I You're welcome. That. Yeah, because you just didn't <laughs> insult me on the air. <laughs> In any case, we only Jeez. are doing goals, assists, power play points, uh, and that's what we got going on pretty much for our league. It's it's very 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 uh, basic, as it were, uh, which is easy for yeah, me. Yeah, it's to, a basic look. It's a to basic. Wrap my head around for the first it's time. It's a basic head-to-head fantasy sports thing. So I mean, I'm I'm not really, you know, looking to be like, oh, you know. This has got to do all these different things. It's not worth it. Yeah, and if you get a shorty, it's worth a lot of points in the league, too. And obviously, uh, for goalies, basically, you get And if anyone cares, Brandon Gallagher's out. Just, oh, yeah, just with saying. two fractured fingers. Two fractured fingers. How many injuries is, that, uh, is on your team right now? I don't know, but I'm about to drop them. <laughs> because you had you picked have, Eberle and Datsuk in, they're the, fine. in the draft. They're oh, fine. no, I know. But initially, they came back. and they're He's doing, the only they're one okay. right now that I have an injury is uh, Gallagher. Okay, um, right, fair enough. I had so, a... so my lineup, if anyone cares, for this uh, for tonight is Ovechkin, Langeskog, Eberle, Forsberg, Stahl, Eric Stahl, um, Zuccarello, Eichel, Brad Marchand, uh, Carl Soberg, Eric Carlson is out tonight, so he's not playing, but I still have him in my lineup, even though it doesn't matter. Uh, <laughs> Shea Weber, <laughs> Ekblad, Dowdy, Girardi, Klein, and then my two goalies are Jay Allen and H. Lundquist. 
Right, well, you you mentioned an interesting player there, Eric Stahl. I just want to know your thoughts real quick. Where is he going to end up? Because Carolina is in the rebuilding phase, and they're definitely not going to be in a position to make the playoffs come the trade deadline. And I definitely see him moved. Where do you think it is? I, mean, I know it's a loaded question, but... as a loaded question. I mean, do we trade the Stahl brothers to the Rangers and we become the Stahl brothers uh, team? <laughs> well, they're <laughs> definitely going to let go of Eric Stahl. I no, don't they're, Jordy. No, Jordan, no Jordan's me. not going to... Um, Probably move. I don't know. I Too can young. see. Him, I can see him going to like a Buffalo. But you know, they have strong center depth in uh, in Eichel. Yeah, but I can still see him going there. You still think so? I don't look. You you tell me that a team has strong whatever. They're still gonna pick up who they want. Who do, who do, I guess uh, they have some young talent, so they could potentially trade them. But they did make a lot of moves in the off season that they were pretty confident with. Who knows? Maybe they yeah. trade with Carolina, and Carolina gets a young center. Yeah, that's true. It could be. It could be. You know, I mean, you know, the Buffalo may want a, a, you know, he's not that experienced, but more experienced than what they are right now. They're a young team. I mean, he's got a Stanley Cup under his belt. Right. He's I a mean, little older, and he's still very good. Uh, you still you know, I wouldn't say he's a Dan year. Boyle, but, I mean, he, <laughs> you know. I think that he goes to the West Coast because they don't want uh, him to come back and hurt him I don't at care. any point. Look, look, you can listen to this broadcast and then yell at me like, what are you talking about, Buffalo? I think he goes to a Buffalo. Okay. I, Who knows? I, I like he may go to Oilers. Oh, goodness, the Oilers. He may get brought down. You know, Who knows? You know, look, there's going to be a lot of moves, but, you know, there's already been one that was requested. I don't know if you heard about this, but Travis Hamannick has requested a trade. Uh, actually, he requested a trade in the offseason due to family matters, and it didn't get any more specific than that uh, because he's being very private about it, and his life is very public. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he lost his father at 10 years old, and he has an organization where after every home game the Islanders have, win or lose, he spends time with a boy or girl uh, about the same age that has lost a parent and that is struggling, and he makes time for that. That's kind of his foundation. Yeah, it's amazing. And he he, I commend him. It, it's one of the most remarkable things I think I've yeah. ever heard someone doing, especially after every single game. I really commend him. But uh, unfortunately, he's suffering through some other family matters right now, and he's requested a trade to go home to Western Canada so he can be closer to his family. So he's going to be either be um, Winnipeg, Calgary, um, Edmonton, uh, a bunch of Western Canadian teams that uh, that – I think there's like four or five of them, and I can't remember the rest of them. But those are, the, well, I would say, Winnipeg and uh, Calgary are probably the biggest two to possibly get him. And the Islanders aren't just going to let him go for anything. Uh, granted, they understand his circumstance and they want to get him to his family. Do we see um, Bufflin go to the Islanders? He would fit in well because that guy is just a maniac and he just likes to hit. But they already have Matt Martin, that goof on the fourth line. So I don't know, man. It's a good. It's actually a really good, good question because like he's pretty young. He's got some very, very good. He's got trade potential. value. Yeah, and he's a really big guy. He he can play forward too. I mean, he can't really play defense, but he is on D right now. Right. Uh, but he has played forward in the past, and he has a Stanley Cup with uh, the Chicago Blackhawks. Yep. So he's got the experience for the playoffs. He was there last year with Winnipeg as well. I think he would want to stay with Winnipeg, but he is a penalty machine, and no, none of the teams really need that right now, especially the Islanders, because they already get enough of that from their uh, sloppy fourth line. Um, but it would be interesting to see him because uh, that makes that team a lot more fierce, and they were already pretty fearsome to begin with. So I don't know, man. And, and if he plays with Calgary, and you put Hamannick with Giordano and Dougie Hamilton, and Bro um, I think it's Brody on there as well, that's going to be a very stacked lineup, yeah. uh, especially on D, and that makes that team look a lot better. But then they got to give up a prospect, so yeah, you, yeah. you got to take a Absolutely. pick. Absolutely. You, you know, I, I find I find that the Islanders have been built on prospects for the past three years. I feel like every time I hear a trade, oh, we're getting prospects, oh, we're getting prospects, oh, we're getting prospects, oh, we're getting prospects. Yeah, they got to get someone uh, capable and, of playing, man. And, He's and, played six years there so far, and yeah, he's a young guy. So. I think, I think you know, I can't speak for the Islander organization, obviously, and I can't speak for Islander fans because I'm not an Islander fan. I, I think they need to start getting some more experience in that team. I don't think they should keep going after these prospects. Yeah, I mean, they're— Because it's sloppy. They're, they're it's honestly to sloppy. win within the next few years, I would say. Yeah, no, because of the experience that the new— pro But if they just exactly. keep going after these newbies, you know, what are you going to do? You're going to keep having this unorganized team of, of people that are new to the NHL, and what are you going to do? I mean, you, the, the most experienced guys you got right now in terms of really playoffs or anything are uh, Letty and Boychuk to, to man your D, which is right. great. Uh, and then you got guys like Tavares uh, and and forwards who have some taste, obviously, last year of the playoffs, but they really don't have that that necessary uh, needed 
uh, you know, playoff yeah. experience and talent. Uh, so we'll see what happens. Yeah. We're going to take a quick break here on Circle Circle. we got a little bit more coming up. Well, we'll give you a wrap-up of, of our thoughts. And uh, we'll be right back. This is Stephen Pierce and Pete Considori, Circle to Circle. Just all the Buffalo. Iona College's highly accredited graduate programs empower students to earn degrees that command respect in the real world. Start your career path today or change direction towards a new profession. Iona's experience.